So, so I will talk about, um, so this was, this is a joint work with uh, the, the first part with uh, last with Erdish and uh, some offer. And then the, the more recent one with, uh, with Xu and Yang and Yi. <coughs> so, um, so, so we start with quantum mechanics. The quantum mechanics of oh, these eye. Sorry, we got one. There's eye. Maybe <laughs> 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 there's a mistake. There's an eye here. Everything is wrong. Okay? So, the Anderson's model is uh, showing an equation here. And there's a Laplace operator plus the random potential. And you can think about this, this, this discrete Laplace operator. And the V is. IID independent random variables. And now you can also define this on the with continuous Laplace operator, and this is a random field, and this but they are basically all the same. And in a way that um, discrete one is actually harder. So now uh, the major open problems here is uh, the existing extended state for small lambda in D beginning equal to three. And uh, so this first one, and second one is uh, the quantum Brownian motion. Is uh, so it's actually it's really, there is really Brownian motion conjecture. The quantum is just referred to that this is the quantum mechanics. So, so for lambda small in dimension in bigger than equal to three, the, lo the location of quantum particle determined by these wave functions is governed by a heat equation in a sense that uh, this dt. So there's no i here. So dt psi. Actually, very square. This is probability density. It's given by, by the Laplace operator acting on um, the wave function square. And in, in fact, there's a diffusion coefficient here, which I uh, which I did not write down because it's not a standard Laplace operator. So they have some diffusion coefficient. And so this is, uh, but heuristically, this is the, this is a conjecture. And uh, on the other hand, if you look at Schrodinger operator with the i here. Then you find the Schrodinger operator, Schrodinger equation is actually ballistic in the sense that uh, if you compute uh, the, uh, the mean square displacement of X, it's called like a T squared. So, so, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very different from the diffusive behavior, which will be the T here. And this is X squared become T squared. So now the Schrodinger operator without potential, right? Yes, this is Schrodinger operator without the potential. Without the potential, so this is free, so, so, so this is free, free Schrodinger. No okay. potential. No. If you take out the, if you take out this potential, it becomes t squared. And now the conjecture is if you put the if you put this random one, it becomes this one. So no matter how small your lambda, once you put it in, it becomes this one. <clears throat> so that's uh, that's a conjecture. <clears throat> and now and uh, so this quantum diffusion actually, if you look at quantum particle in the phonon field, this can be done. And so that's because the environment. It's time dependent. It's, it's, it's actually quite different from, uh, from this. From this uh, <laughs> and uh, the correct way to say uh, a quantum mechanics uh, uh, becomes how, how to define the probability density of a wave function is, uh, is, is one, look at, one has to look at this so called Wigner distributions. The Wigner distribution take away wave functions and then you shift their face a little bit. And you do the Fourier transform in the phase. And this becomes a, a density for the position and the velocity. And the velocity V is, is Fourier variables. And, and this will become this some sort of classical, um, uh, classical density associated with wave functions, given by this. You can see that if you integrate over V, it becomes the size square. So this really probability of finding a particle X. And, and so, <clears throat> of course, his question is this, uh, uh, this, this Wigner distribution is not positive, but, uh, but in, in, in most cases we will look at the, in the limit, it will become positive. All right, so, so, this, uh, so the known result in this area is actually- uh, So, so uh, you did not mention, of course dimension one is very different, dimension two. Well, dimension two, there's some debate, and, and I think I think what's going to happen in dimension two is um, is this was still correct up to very very long time. It's probably exponential lambda inverse or something. But, uh, but whether it's really, I, I don't really know whether two is what exactly really happening. 
I don't think it's, uh, it's you know. So localization, it's not it. Uh, expected, but expected. Yeah, but the localization lens is, is something like exponential lambda inverse or something. It's yeah. very difficult. <laughs> it's probably the hardest case. I would guess. All right. So, so then we look at this problem. Actually, I, I started to look at this problem at the end of 1990s. And, uh, and then I, then it was, uh, so now the problem becomes, becomes so, when asked some questions so, so easy, it's kind of ridiculous that you don't know that something has to be done here. So if we scale the, the space and the time in the same way, but with lambda minus two, <coughs> lambda minus two is the first non-trivial scale. You can see some, something happen. Oh, and lambda is the coupling constant? Yes, lambda is, a, lambda is, is, is this coupling constant. Lambda. Sorry, can I ask one more question? Yes. On the first page? Yes. <laughs> <I'm gonna> <laughs> Tom told me to slow you down. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, you said the discrete uh, is harder than the continuous case. Yes. And then uh, what's the reason for that? I mean, in the discrete oh. case, it's obviously if lambda is zero, we can view we can view uh, if lambda is large as the Laplacian as a perturbation of the other one, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, continuum, okay. that's not clear. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, you are right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends on uh, So the reason I say that uh, the discrete sometimes is a bit harder is because um, at least in, in, in many cases, they are harder. It's also because the, if you look at the, 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 the symbol of Laplace operator in the um, the, the Fourier transform is one minus the cosine square something, so there are some remember, <laughs> singular behaviors near a few a few a few points. And they sometimes will, will cause some technical difficulty. And the other thing is that the discrete one, if you make both guys discrete, then the problem is much harder, really quite a lot harder. So <clears throat> all right. So now so the first non-trivial scale is you scale the space and time by lambda minus two. So this is first non-trivial scale. And the first non-trivial scale, you're gonna get a Boltzmann equation. And uh, uh, then, but you see, you take a lambda goes zero limit. So this is something is so far from, uh, from this uh, symptomatic behavior one is issue. So the conjecture is for lambda fixed as t goes to infinity. But now you start to scale the space and time with lambda. So it's, it's, it's a lot of cheating. But this you get the Boltzmann equation. And uh, uh, so this was proved by, by Spong for short times and some time ago. And we started doing this for making the time longer. And the paper was published in 2000, but we started in 1996 or something. So, so this was the uh, Boltzmann equation. So I get a Boltzmann equation. And if you remember the same amount, they, they talk a lot of uh, uh, actually the, the, the time scale they can do is just slightly more than Boltzmann. So, uh, um, now, so now if you, if you take a Boltzmann, if you increase the time scale, you still take lambda minus two here, but now you, on top of this, you make a diffusive rescaling. So diffusive rescaling, you scale uh, uh, the X and T in slightly different way, and uh, you scale the space at, uh, at the X and T, and now you find that you, go, you satisfy a heat equation. So on top of uh, both my equation, and then you go to a time slightly longer, but this time is not really much longer, it's just uh, a little bit more than lambda minus two. And then a bit more than lambda minus two, then you get uh, a heat equation. You get a heat equations with a diffusion coefficient and diffusion coefficient can be computed just by on the energy shell and then use a sign. Uh, this is uh, the derivative becomes a sign. And otherwise, I mean, the, the energy here is, uh, is one minus cosine squared because we are using the, the discrete. One. Otherwise, in continuous, this will be a p square. This will be cos squared, and this will be just cos i cos t. Okay. So this was the the the, uh, the confusion in the in the quantum mechanics in, in the uh, random Schrodinger equation, and this uh, actually this was uh, was the so first result in this direction. And uh, the paper was published in 2005, I think, 2004. But uh, actually, this, this, this kappa, until today, they, they still uh, not improved. Yet. And so, so now why, why this become, why, why? Uh, question. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, go ahead. Who? 
fact that oh, um, uh, yes. can you do the same theorem for, for the greater than three, or is it specific? Oh, yeah, 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 you can do the greater, no, no problem. Yeah, it's no not problem. A, okay. yeah. I think yeah. I think this one is is even correct, but even two because the time scale is still small. It's, I forgot I forgot exactly if your theorem state would be bigger than two. So, yeah. But it's higher, it's, it's not a problem. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say that that's a significant breakthrough because we can only do cap equals zero before. I mean, yeah. Right? Yes. I mean, that was basically yes. all. So, so the whole the whole work is just to to change this kappa to, to, to be to be yeah, you, you just get it past. It's just getting harder yes. already. And uh, it's about it's actually about two hundred pages. <laughs> so it was. Uh, so we should be skeptical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, that's when it comes to bump. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to show you a picture, and then uh, if this picture is correct, then. then. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what happened is in atomic scale, then uh, then you uh, you see you have a, you have obstacle, you have a random potential, and then everything is a wave, you have wave scattering in, in, in atomic scale. And now the reason you got both my equation is uh, suppose so now if you if you make the scale bigger, and now you see a few obstacles, and now every time you do a scattering, you do a you do a, a quantum mechanical scattering, and then the quantum mechanical scattering becomes a classical Boltzmann scattering operator. And this is I mean this this of course one has one has really do it. It's uh, it's uh, the, the reason because you see your wave function is squared, and the wave function is squared so. So this kind of picture, this kind of quantum picture is, uh, is for wave function side. And now for wave function side, you're scattering like this. And then on the other hand, you are look, you're interested in the side times side bar. So you have a side scattering like this, but the scattering order, I mean, it, it's really a wave. So this guy go to here, it's, it's a wave like this, and then there are, there are many waves here. It's, it's not exactly following this order. And then you have a side and side square. So you would say that uh, the, the wave interference Will sort of cancel out, and you only see the this quantum, this uh, Boltzmann scattering. So what's what's the Boltzmann equation? Boltzmann equation. You have incoming, you have incoming wave, and then they, they, they a scattering operator. So there's a sigma U B scattering operator. You have incoming U, and then it goes out with a B. And then this, if you want to write the F U minus F B, this this is this linear scattering operator. Over you. It's a linear Boltzmann. It's a linear Boltzmann. It's a linear Boltzmann because uh, because right now because the, you have it, it's it's a scattering of the fixed obstacle, so it's a linear Boltzmann equation. And there's a Boltzmann collision kernels and then you know, as FB integral over you and you get it. And this one is is almost then so. <coughs> So now, if you if you make time even not even bigger, it's lambda minus two minus kappa over two, then you get something bigger, and then you this picture which just becomes here. And now, once you you do a lot of Boltzmann uh, collisions, it becomes a diffusive equation. So then that's why it becomes a heat equation here. So this so this so you go from this this atomic scale to the kinetic scale to a diffusive scale. This is what becomes the heat equations because of this. All right now. Um, so, so this was um, so we did this in uh, you know, almost about twenty years ago, and then the proof was quite complicated, and we were sort of very disappointed and discouraged, and didn't know what to do with it. And uh, and also, um, so I'll tell you maybe later on a little bit about the method. It's, uh, it's just far too complicated to do anything. Uh, also, at the time, the book can can see the. Uh, Problem of a scattering with a decaying potential, but uh, but he, his method is also the same. It's also expansion, and so they, they, they're essentially all the same thing. And, uh, all right. Sorry, do you actually hear uh, see like a clear transition between the different length scales, like when you plot it or like in the equation? Can you actually tell? 
So, so, so can I actually tell what, what, what do you mean? Can I actually tell? Well, you're showing three different pictures. Like it's pretty obvious that you pick like the best case examples to show that. But when you're going from like the diffusive scale to like the kinetic scale, for example, this transition, like could one pinpoint like the precise location or semi-precise or is it very like not uh, clear? I think that because you, you so for example, you, you, you look at diffusive scale. So what you know is uh, then you you write down your solution of the Schrodinger equation in terms of elementary scattering process, and then then you and then you have to say that uh, after after this um, uh, in, interference, uh, this construction interference, this construction interference, and then this picture emerge, and uh, that you can see that you have to assume that uh, it's uh, the time is, is a bit bigger. And exactly, you are, if you are asking me the, is there a clear transition, I, I think you can, you can sort of see it because you write down, you can write down up to this scale, you can write down everything. So you see a ballistic scale, yes, yeah, solo and then you start to see it. Solo explicit, yes. All right. Okay, so uh, now, now we want to do the, the band matrix. So, so the reason to do the band matrix is you want to consider models sort of. Um, um, uh, ca carry some uh, some characteristic of the random Schrodinger equation, but on the other hand, uh, you, you don't want you, you don't want to be a mean field. So you want to do the mean field. I explained last time is uh, you take a random potential. It's uh, you take band matrix with uh, uh, you just consider the band matrix like this, and uh, and then with uh, with a band, this band with this stuff. And now this is a this is a picture in the in the one dimension and uh, in higher dimension it becomes in two dimensions like this the distance is defined by it. and uh, the, the distance in, in two dimension in three dimension and then there's a function f and this function f gives you the the variance of the of the matrix because the variance of the matrix at any point here is uh, is f x minus y squared f x minus y so this is the variance so the variance has changed you would like to if you don't want to think about too much about this f, it's really just a currency function of, uh, of a distance w. All right, so this is, it is so, so roughly speaking, you're thinking about something like, uh, it's almost like changing, changing this operator has some this currency distance w in this way. So, so this is some- um, W1 one being one would be almost like Schrodinger, right? That's yeah. right, that's right. But then I, I don't have Laplace operator. I don't have Laplace operator. So, so this was something we, and now if one translates something like uh, our theorem says, uh, and roughly speaking, I mean, it's, this is not exact, this is just roughly speaking exact. It's a green function square. It's going to be the green function of a diffusive, op of a diffusive operator D, and this is some diffusive coefficient. So, so the Fourier transform of the green function square, it becomes eta plus P squared. So this roughly speaking there, that's a picture. We want to establish this picture. And now remember the time scale we have in, in the in the Brendan Schrodinger, it's uh, it's just it's just a little bit more than kinetic scale. So lambda minus two minus cap. Now what is lambda? Lambda roughly speaking is in lambda square, which you still have in mind the lambda, lambda minus two is roughly w to d. So that's in our case, we will choose W. That's the, that's the picture. So now, so in this case, now we want, so the conjecture becomes uh, the green function square. And now you know the diagonal term. If you look at off diagonal term, it's going to look like one minus M square and semicircle square times S and one over this. So this, this would be this would become a conjecture. I mean, this is not precise as you know, it's just roughly the size <coughs> look like this. And this guy, this one minus s c squared s, I will explain to you later on why why it become like this. And this one is and this eta plus p squared will be the same. Will be this will be the corresponding operator in the case of bend matrix of this eta plus p squared. And would you remind people what s is again? Oh, S, S is the S is this uh, uh, this variance matrix of the of the band matrix. So your band matrix here, 
you have hx y y square and you're going to assume that that, that, that sums to one right uh, yeah, yeah but I, I think that's important otherwise yes and then we assume that the uh, summation of xxy summation of y is equal to one so this is my relation and that's why each xxy is one over w3 so this so did i did i mention this uh Okay. Yes, the, the summation of this is SXY summation over Y equal to one, and uh, each SXY is one over W3 and D. So, blah, we speak. We speak to us, correct? So, thanks a lot. Okay. All right. So, so now this is something you, you want to show that this is correct. And in principle, you want to show this W is large and fixed, and D is bigger than three. So, um, and now uh, this, this, this semicircle, this semicircle of uh, square MSC. So I want to remind you that uh, the explicit calculation of this one, uh, absolute right square is very close to one. So this guy is actually very close to one. So, so in one minus eta. And this operator S, because uh, if you think about this, is one plus uh, one plus the delta, uh, delta in, the, in the scale of W. So, so I want you to think about this S is. Uh, so this S is. Uh, So you want to think about S is so this distance is just one, one, one. It's one over W to the P. Like this, and this distance is W. You want to think of this way. So if you think of this way, then, then this one is becomes the uh, minus the plus of in the scale W plus the, plus the constant times identity of. And so, so the S, it becomes one plus one plus operator. So now here I just just neglect scale of W because I don't want to carry this constant. And so this one minus m square s becomes uh, this m square m s c square is one minus eta, and s becomes the plus operator plus one. And uh, if you carry out this calculation, it's exactly becomes one over eta minus delta, and that's why these two things are the same thing. Okay, so this is why they are the same. All right, so, so this becomes uh, a green functions of random walk, and uh, it's also green function of heat equations. Uh, if you restore the W, green function of the heat equation in, uh, in at time. So the time time is the inverse of this eta, the time is eta minus one. So you have information on, on the dependence on B or lambda. B, B. Lambda. Lambda. Yes, D. Depends on lambda, right? So it's zero if lambda is equal to zero. Uh, you, you talk about B or D? D, D like, uh, like, uh, like uh, D. Like uh, like D. Like D. Full D and lambda? Capital D. No, no, D. The lambda is diffusion. Oh, uh, D, lambda is diffusion. How it depends on lambda? Oh, how this guy depends on lambda? Yeah. It's a power series. So it starts from lambda or lambda square? Or it's lambda one plus lambda square. No, D is one over when is lambda the minus one two. It's, it gets very large when lambda gets small. Uh, you're approaching ballistic. D is roughly speaking lambda. Yeah. So so okay, I I I, I, can, I can tell you later what's uh, what's the diffusion coefficient here looks like, which is easier. Because you're ballistic for that time scale, and then uh, for time scale lambda minus two, and then then the diffusion kicks in. So uh, diffusion D is roughly speaking lambda to the minus two power. If that is coupling, that's smaller. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So uh, so so anyway. So so this one is uh, the band matrix case. Now we want to show is this guy. And so now that remember the times eta minus one and eta minus one is the time t. So the the previous theorem is eta minus two. The previous theorem is uh, you can go to lambda minus two. So lambda minus two is eta minus one. This is uh, so the corresponding statement is eta minus one. It's like uh, so this is uh, lambda minus two, but lambda minus two is, is w. It's w to the d. So the time of one can do it. if lambda minus two is w to the d, and uh, you just want to go over w to the d. All right. So so the theorem how we uh, oh I see so I, now here one one I would like to just remind you the behavior of standard green functions. 
and uh, and this eta because it's eta plus uh, plus the p squared the Fourier transform, and so you can you can compute that. Uh, uh, so so now I, I think I mainly want to say the dimension bigger than equal to three is go like x to the d minus two in dimension d, and so this is the Fourier transform of the standard Laplace operator with with a mass term. And then the, the, the x will be cut off at eta minus one half. And then if eta become even smaller, uh, except this diffusive term, because you have a, they, 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 you're going to have a, have a constant term and uh, when, when eta become quite small, because now we are doing this in the box of size L. So the Laplace operator has a zero mode and this zero mode will translate into this term. So when eta become very small, actually this term were dominating, this term would become even bigger than this guy. So this, all right. So, uh, so probably I, I will skip this, uh, this, this, uh, um, this saw this time and, uh, and also, uh, but the only thing I want to mention- What, what is, was N? Sorry? sorry what was N? N, oh, N is L3D. N is, is number of lattice like L3D. All right, n is L three D. Okay, so uh, so let's give the thought this time, and and I think the whole th everything is just want to establish this picture of the green function square is behaving like this, and uh, and then uh, all the conjecture um, in band metric is based on this picture. And then you can figure out why the it has a bigger dimension two, and in dimension one the local with the localization transition. And everything is completely based on this picture. Okay, so so the theorem we have is uh, uh, if we take green function of band metric square, and if w is L three delta in dimension is bigger than seven, and eta is bigger than L three five minus d plus epsilon, then the green function square is actually given by this behavior, uh, by this eta plus p of the diffusion coefficient. And the diffusion coefficient, there is a constant term, and then it's in power series of W minus D over two. And then you can go as high as, uh, as any, any K fix. So we are, so, so this is the sum, this is what the, the, the theorem is, is about. And now, uh, and then it also tell you that uh, if a length scale is large enough, you QE hold, and also the, uh, this uh, delocalization is, uh, is not really, it's not really L3 minus D, and there are some, there's some uh, L3 five here. And, uh, but there's also universality is also correct if dimension is high enough, depending on this data. So it's absolute data, depending on the data. Okay, now uh, today I want to explain that this why- says, This says you don't localize, right? Okay. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, and high dimension. This, this one, it, so dimension bigger than seven, is don't localize. Yeah. Definitely don't localize. Yeah. And, and but this one is so this one says oh I just he has to go like higher than 15 or something, then then it actually become completely flat. So completely flat in the sense you still have to do some average, but uh, but AV eigen, but this is correct for AV eigenvector in the bar, it's correct. All right, so uh, so now uh, so now we uh, so we want so so I'm trying to explain the what how the how the proof is going. So the proof is uh, we, we are not really, our proof is, is in the in the position space. So we are not really establishing this Fourier transform behavior. We are proving this in the position space, in the sense that we compute the green function square, and we are able to come to find that the self-energy correction here term, and uh, and then to the m semicircle square times s. So the difference between the original formula and this new one is there's a correction term or self energy term, and this one has a power series expansion. So then we can we have an algorithm to to come uh, to give a calculation of this term for any finite k. So this is really the main input, and then this sigma k has to satisfy a sum zero property because uh, we want to view this one as as the uh, as, as a differential of as a Laplace operator. I mean, some generalized sense of Laplace operator. So you want to have a sum zero properties. So the sum zero property means that it's epsilon n of z is a matrix, it's a matrix element, the sum over x, it's actually it's much, it's a, it's a factor, this eta comes in, it becomes almost zero. So this is the key, this is the key, uh, this is a key statement we want to prove is this. 
there's some of your properties of this one. And, uh, and this, this asymptotic is correct with some error with some errors. Of course, if, if that didn't hold, then you couldn't have diffusion. That's right. If uh, actually, so you might just point that out. Yes. Otherwise, uh, this one, this one, if if you don't have this uh, this sum zero property, then then, then even though this w to the minus d over two, you think it's a small, it's small, but it's not. But uh, diffusion. yeah, but then you, you will not just destroy the huge distribute uh, diffusions. You will also make this expression actually almost. Uh, it's, it's difficult to, to, to make it has a meaning. So for example, now here, if you look at this calculation, if I asymptotically you take S equal to one minus one minus one plus delta, and this sigma I, I continue here, and the m square is one minus eta. So this is what I what I previously said. It will become one over eta minus the plus over the minus sigma. So this sigma will appear as a correction to a to a delta to a um, to a delta operator as a correction. So this, this stigma need to have a property. It has to be a second order derivative term. And the second order derivative terms uh, in, discrete, in discrete setting, the most important one is a symmetric. And it's also, when you sum, it's almost, it has to be almost zero. So it has to be, you have to show that this is almost zero. And now the question is, uh, is how do you derive these asymptotic expansions? And how do you see that, uh, how do you see that this, the, uh, the object you are creating will have this sum zero property. You can view this as a correction to a Laplace operand. I mean, if you can do something parallel like this for the, for the Schrodinger equation, then you are essentially solve the objective. So, um, I mean, it's not, it's not quite because we still have a, some minor technical part, but the, the parallel question of this one for the for Raynan Schrodinger. It's, 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 uh, it's not really a completely solved question, but it's essential. And now then you ask me that, uh, so, so, so that I want to show, explain to you how, how, this, how this is correct. And uh, I, of course, I will give some idea. And the other thing is, uh, we also have it, so, so where the QE, QE comes from and where this universality come from. And the QE come from is because this GXY squared has a lot of information about green function. And it, Actually, from this explicit expression, you can actually already compute the, uh, you can already compute eigenfunction has become completely flat if dimension high enough. So this one is, once you have this, uh, this asymptotic expansion, then to get QE in high dimension, relatively straightforward. It's just, uh, it's just you plug into the, you plug in your answer, you, you compute it, it has to be correct because, because what we have is essential asymptotic expansion of this guy explicitly. All right, so now, uh, sort of previous work, and uh, so this was uh, uh, Tom and his postdoc did this in 2002 with the 10 steel states using the super symmetric method. And then, uh, then we did a lot, uh, I did a lot with, with, Bo, with Bo Gate and uh, 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 oh, yeah, so the the, this one is the three three quarter was done with with again Yang and Yin, and the earlier one we did uh, has a paper with with Lasso and uh, and also with NT, and uh, and then there are also look, some localization. I mean, all these results in essentially one dimension, and for higher dimension, it's actually um, that's actually all the result in high dimension is, is is fairly weak because all this uh, this all dependence on it depending on the dimension uh, comes in here. So, uh, all right. And there's also the localization on Anderson model on the tree, but tree, the dimension is infinity. So um, this was previous result. Now, now uh, I want to explain the, the, the difference between what we are trying to do uh, in the random matrix and uh, what's the standard for the Bayesian theory in Feynman, uh, Feynman graph and so on. So, so if you if you look if I look at this problem, you take the plus of it plus random potential minus c, and uh, you want to understand this green function, and the most naive way is uh, try to do the resolving expansion of v. So you try to do resolving expansion of v, so you v and v square and a higher order term. So you try to do a resolving expansion here, and all these resolving expansions. So this looks this looks like uh, a, a very a very stupid idea. And well, it's a very stupid or very elementary idea. And you would like to try to do more. 
than this. Uh, but actually, since, uh, uh, since Anderson discovered this model, and for the lambda is small, this is more or less the only thing you can do. There's not much beyond this. What you can do is, uh, besides this, what you can do is you can subtract something in this G0. So you can, you can make some subtraction and change the V has some correction. This is called renormalization, but, but it's just some sort of simple uh, subtracting some uh, in the G now you some make some simple subtraction here. And other than that, other than that, for 50 years, this is the only the only way you can do for small couple. There's uh, uh, I, I don't I don't see any any other ideas out, out, of, out of the out, outside besides besides something to expansion like so you do expansion like G like this, then can be a G bar doing the same expansion. And then you take the square and then you do the Gaussian pairing between the V and the V. And you see that you have a G like this. Now you write on a line here as a G and also as a V and as lambda square, but this is a G bar. And then you times them together. And now you see this V and this guy has a pairing and, and this has a pairing. And then this is about all you can do. Uh, and, and, Everything else is just counting the graph and try to analyze all these terms and all the scattering and so. But this becomes incredibly difficult to do because, uh, because if you have a, you see the, the, the picture I show you in the beginning here, if you look at this diffusion, so there are a lot of collision here. So you, you really have a lot of collision. And how many collision you have is lambda to the minus k over two. So, so you have a, a, a lot of, collision term here. So you have a lot of collision and the, the, the number of collision, the typically the number of collision, if you have a if you have n terms in V, then the number of collision, uh, the number of pairing in the Gaussian is, is sort of n factorial. And n factorial, now if this T is lambda to the, say it's lambda to the minus one third, then you get lambda to the minus one third to the factorial. On the other hand, if you really want to do a lot uh, in a very, very high order, suppose you want to go the, you want to say that you can do the problem for lot for T is lambda to the minus N for arbitrary N. So suppose you want to do the lambda, you want to do the T is lambda to the minus N for uh, lambda to the minus K for arbitrary K. And then you are going to have a lambda to the minus K factorial. <laughs> Uh, lambda to the minus k factorial, and which is just completely impossible to analyze. And so, uh, so the idea of using this uh, this this expansion uh, with the, this so-called free propagator and then expanding the potential, expanding your potential in the Feynman graph, it just I, I don't think I don't think this idea can be pushed further. So so that's why. Uh, so that's why we, we, after we did this, this, this one third or something, so, so nobody has any stomach to try to, uh, try to do it further because uh, it's clear. I mean, if you can do it, okay, so it's one third, you can, maybe you can improve to one or you can do two, but, but so what? But uh, it's, it's, the whole thing is so complicated. So there's no, not much difference between one third and one or two, but it's so technically so much uh, too complicated. Uh, so, so this idea, Clearly, it's not it's not working, and now so that's why we we switch it to random matrix. Actually, the reason the reason I, I went to uh, doing the matrix is, is really because uh, uh, we didn't see any idea to 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 go beyond this uh, this expansion, and then I, I simply could not spend the rest of my life just keep on doing this expansion. <laughs> <laughs> so I cannot you know I start to improve one third. And, one half and I would just I would just die. <laughs> <laughs> and so so then we went to see the so so the idea so then at some point uh, so I also read the paper of Tom and also there are many so there are people are talking about when the shorting will become when the when the matrices. So everybody is talking about that and uh, everywhere. So I, I listened to lots of talk in when the matrices and then I went to talk to Percy Dyer. What he says, if you want to do a random matrix, you first understand the Riemann Hilbert, of course. Let's say. And, uh, but it turned out it's too difficult for me to understand. And so, uh, but it's RH. Riemann hypothesis is even harder. 
<laughs> yes, I, you can always mix. Harder, harder. Yes. So then, uh, so then we decide. Well, because uh, because rain and short, you want to put rain and shorting become become random matrices because we cannot make progress on rain and shorting. So in, in some in some tea time, we are we are a few people. I, I think I I it's a, a Benjamin Schlein and Lars and me. We we sit there and look at each other. It's almost a die and we don't know what to do. And so the conversation says, well, then why not? If you want to put this guy go to there because we cannot move here. Let's try to move the other way. And this idea. So then, then, then we start to look at uh, random matrices. And now, so for random matrices, actually, it became possible to, in the band matrix, to extend this to arbitrary high power. I mean, to defend that. Yes, I no, no, I'm not, I'm not saying. Yeah, I have to defend. <laughs> uh, to defend that. Universality in the uh, potential, you know what I'm talking about, the yes. uh, Gaussian invariance does require, yes, I mean, uh, for its finest analysis, does require this. It's uh, uh, rather than the big no ensemble, yeah, yeah, uh, yes, uh, I, I'm not, I, you know, I, I appreciate uh, Prezi very much to tell me to look at when the matrices and uh, quite a lot. So I was just saying that uh, it's a uh, uh, we, we we try to look at this problem clash with Ren and Schrodinger. So uh, so this uh, this kind of uh, so now we let, so let's look at the expansion in the the idea of expansion in the matrices. Then you will find that uh, you are, you start to completely look at things in a completely in the in a way that you never you would never thought about this in Ren and Schrodinger's setting. So so for uh, for random matrices, then you want to prove that uh, uh, the, the, there's a self-consistent equation for a semicircle. For, so now you want to prove, so I, I explained this last time in uh, how, to, how to get a semicircle law, but now let's just redo it once again and see what, what exactly was going on. Because in random, in random, uh, in random, mat random matrices, you can HMIS Z. And then you, you add semicircle, you subtract semicircle like this, and now you expand H plus M, and then you look, you become an equation like that. So now the, you get you was, so this is still resolving expansion. You will say, well, I mean, you're still doing a resolving expansion. And so, uh, so what's the difference? And now you look at this H times G. So this H is H I. So you look at this H times G, and now you look at the square of this guy. And one of them, this G bar, you just keep the G bar. And the other one, the other one, you, you, the other one you do this, uh, this resolving expansion. So that's HX, HX alpha and G alpha Y. And then this G bar here is HX alpha and G alpha Y. And this is subtract, this term is my subtraction. So there's subtraction here. But anyway, so this is still, you still have a H times G, H times G, and then G bar, which, which is just carry over. So the capital H is just the matrix, is just the big matrix. Yes, the matrix H, H, H is the band matrix. H is the band matrix. So, so you take the band matrix and now you, you still do the dynamics. It's almost the same. But now, it, because this guy, you start to think about, suppose they take this guy as a Gaussian. And then you do a Gaussian integration by parts. So that Gaussian, of course, you do, naturally do Gaussian integration by part. Gaussian integration by part is H can, can hit on G. And H can also hit on G bar. So here I just just do one term hit on, on the this I just hit on the G. So this one hit on the G, and then you can uh, the derivative of the metric element of the, of the green functions it becomes the product of green functions. So they, so this is some simple formula you can compute the, the perturbation of the matrix. It's the product of two matrices, or two, product of two uh, two green functions. So this product two green functions, and now you. Put this back here and come and combine with this G bar. And this one, you do this most, you, you start to uh, do this more systematic. It becomes like uh, this is the G X Y here, this G X Y here, and the G bar X Y is not. Yeah, I mean one of them is the red one is this guy. This one is this one. Okay. So you take you take this one, and then you uh, so then this S X one S X alpha term, this one becomes this term. And uh, and this G alpha alpha is you make G alpha alpha it becomes uh, it becomes you, you subtract it and you plus it back like this. So you write in terms of, of Feynman's uh, diagrams languages. So you you got the expansion like this. I mean, 
it's impossible for you to, to follow this calculation on the blackboard. But what I'm trying to say is the following. What I'm trying to say is uh, once you look at a problem from the from random matrix point of view and you do integration by parts, you find all the propagate. So this is a, in physics called the propagate. All the propagate are the full propagate of the problem. It's not a free propagate. So you remember when you write this, uh, remember we write this Laplace operator. Uh, this green function expansion G equal to G naught plus G naught B G naught. This kind of expansion. This kind of expansion, this G naught is always a free propagate. So this, this equal a free propagate because this one is associated with the mass approaching mass. So this is free propagate. On the other hand, once you look at random matrices, this one is a solution. So every, every line you see here is a solution. So it becomes a self-consistent equation. So instead of you expand something into some free object, and, and then you look at its correction, its process, now your point of view completely changed. Your point of view is you want to derive a self-consistent equation. So, and, and this is this is the key, and it's so natural from the random matrix point of view, but uh, but if you look at this from the Schrodinger operator, uh, so you, you, you never want to, want to expand it into the, the whole, the whole uh, propagate. And in this way, so, so what I'm trying to say is uh, uh, the idea of, uh, of expansion using the elementary, elementary free propagator as an intrinsic constraint because, uh, because the, if you think about this, this, this scattering process, of this uh, Boltzmann equation of scattering process, the number of scattering you have to deal with is enormously large. On the other hand, if you look at self-consistent equation point of view, the number of collisions you have to deal with is only finite. So it changes your problem of infinite many collisions like uh, astronomical large to something has a finite number of collisions. So that's the idea. And this idea only comes out, I mean, it's, it's a nat it naturally comes out in random matrix, but uh, it's very difficult to think about it in a Schrodinger equation. But of course, uh, I mean, of course, this is, this is, looks nice, but they are still, uh, they are huge, huge, are a huge price to pay. Can we go, but I just have a question when you go yes. into the previous slide. So, so the, the problem that the, uh, the, the generator here, though, is actually you started with one Green's function, yes, and then on the right side there you got two, yes. So, so no, 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 the, the left side is a two, two, and this is a two. Actually, and yes, then, but then when I do with the integration by parts, oh, you, you get, get, get now I get three, right? Yeah, yeah that's three. So what do you do with that? And three, so three then then you did, so but you believe that the diagonal term is is going to look like a look like a semicircle, so you subtract this one. And this one becomes a correction term because you expect there's a G alpha alpha. Yes, track, that's the self energy. Becomes, yeah, yeah become, becomes this one close to M. Yeah. And the, the main term will, will have no, uh, will still okay. have a term. So, so you regard that other term as being. Uh, and this one will become the error term. Yeah. Error and then this error term later, we, of course, you will expand further. And then it's, it's still a nightmare to do expansion. <laughs> I mean, the expansion is a nightmare. It's, it, you still have to write almost. Uh, you still have about 150 pages. <laughs> <laughs> but the difference is, uh, it's not a number of collisions you can handle. It's essentially arbitrary high power in now. I think it's a very important point. Yeah. So, so, so that's, the, that's the message. You know, I, I wish it's a bit easier, but uh, uh, I, 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 believe, I believe in Alex's principle. That somebody is going to come out with a simple idea and completely rewrite this in 10 pages. <laughs> and so, but. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm trying to, <laughs> in the meantime, I'm just trying to collect a few ideas so that people in later on can make it into you know, 10, 10, 20 pages. All right. So, so this we then we get an equation. So if you look at the, what we are doing here, there, and in, right in the mathematics, so roughly speaking, we get an equation like that. We get an equation. We have a t operator is g x y squared has a main term, and has a correction term. But the trouble is uh, that if you look at the previous equation, you go to the T going like the main term is M squared S, and then there's, uh, there's M squared ST. This M squared ST is the, is, if, you, if you want to track that, this is, uh, 
this one actually I forgot I want to draw m squared here and this is s and times t so this is this term we get this term. and uh, and then there's there is a momentum idea I, idea did not write as m square s and then there are error term there and then the idea is you move this one to the other side and you divide this over so now this move to this one divide over you get so you get the, you get to solve the t in this way but now if you look at the solution then you start to find that you're in trouble because uh, because this divide over you know that m square is like uh, one minus eta so if this one is m squared like one minus eta this operator is going to like this operator is what we talk about is eta minus the plus operator inverse but eta minus the plus operator inverse is decay is decay in the in the position space is actually d minus two so if you look at this Fourier chart, this look at its uh, this kernel is x d minus two. But x d minus two, if you integrate over x, you are going to have x squared. So this means that in this equation, all these error term will have a, will be magnified by l squared. But later on, you want to take l go to infinity. So this becomes a total nightmare. So this term, once you once you increase by is you magnify the error by l squared, it just makes this impossible. Uh, to control. And then the, uh, the idea is uh, this error term. This error term actually has a structure. It's a structure so that this L squared, uh, this L squared factor can, uh, one can handle this L squared factor because otherwise uh, this idea, this, this, this will not work. And this, the, the property that makes that this L squared factor becomes manageable is exactly some zero property. And this equation was uh, was first written down with with Erdish and and Antino and the Yin and myself in 2013. And we look at this equation for I don't know for for, for, for many years without making much progress until it, uh, one realized that uh, that if the error term has a structure has a two derivative in the errors. So suppose the error term has you know that you already knew that. The, there are two derivatives there. If you have two derivatives, you do a two integration by parts. This integration by parts twice will change the one over x3 d minus two to one over x3 d. And once you change to one over x3 minus d, you only get some log divergence and which one can handle. And so the key, the key is uh, the error term will have a structure. You need an error term has a structure that uh, it, has, it has two derivatives in the error terms, you, you should be able to extract two derivatives. And otherwise, then the other error term will be so small that you don't really, care. it's smaller than L squared, so essentially you don't really care. So that's the key. And now, so now the question is why the error term uh, can have, a, why the error term has a structure of their two derivatives. This, this was, is, uh, uh, I will try to explain this in, in two or three minutes. So, so roughly speaking, our expansion is, uh, is actually like, like this. And uh, the self energy term sigma here is what you want to compute. And you want to show that this one, uh, th this term has uh, some sort of mean, uh, mean zero properties. That is some zero properties. And some zero property will give you, so if you, so the some zero property tell you that uh, there's some error term, uh, uh, some error term is sigma x, y, and so then you over y, it's essentially equal to zero, it's almost zero. And if you have something almost some equal to zero, and then if you know it's symmetric, then it becomes a Laplace operator in some sense. And, uh, and then the, the, the starting point is, uh, so, so, we, so then you, you take this self energy term, and now you, you look at the, uh, so out of desperation, we try to compute the, the higher order term of this, uh, of this uh, self energy term. And then, uh, uh, of course, this, uh, then, then the one day, uh, the young, young people find out that actually, if you look at the, the fourth sum. order term, you have to sum and, them up, right? And then you sum them all. And then you sum over all the indices. And you look at the correct real part, and everything actually correct, then you got it. But there is another one, the negative, negative. Uh, Okay, so this is this is all. So later on, this is almost what identity. But uh, yeah. but uh, uh, but it's uh, it's it's this kind of calculation. So the, you find it's zero explicitly, so you have confidence that it's correct, it's the right idea. 
and uh, so this falls all the term. And then, uh, then I think I think Yang and Yin they also try to compute the fifth order. And then later on, they wrote the wrote the computer program to check a few terms, but quickly they, they, they couldn't check on the computer either. So, but we we are convinced it's correct. So, so, so I mean, just to say you have a, that those double lines are like one over p squared, they have one over p squared, yeah. one over p squared. That's right. And the, you better, the sigma better have it vanish at p equals zero, yes. otherwise you're going to yes. get powers of right. p. Then you're dead. Then you're dead. So, that's that's right. Right. so yeah. So and so then. Uh, then this was, uh, <clears throat> so now I, I, I can't really explain this some little problems uh, in the desk, uh, it just in, in two minutes, but so this was, was, it's actually the key. And the idea is, uh, idea is we look at this word identity and we find out that uh, the word identity will give this, this some zero property for all order, every order, it's come from order identity. <laughs> and this idea is a bit strange because what happened is that <clears throat> you have to choose a system large enough to adapt to your problems. And the system size keep on changing. And the system size keep on changing, then it's going to produce the sum zero probability for any order. So, so that your family of order identity can give you all these sum zero problems. That's the, that's the key idea. And, uh, but unfortunately, I, I don't think I can, uh, I can say very much about this uh, today uh, because my time is almost finished. And, and so I just want to, uh, and so there are some more some more discussion about why high dimension, and uh, maybe uh, let me end the talk by by mentioning a few a few open problems of these uh, these three lectures and so. So, uh, oh, so, so the summary the summary is uh, we put these uh, quantum diffusions and connecting all these all these uh, all these concepts. And the idea is always uh, you first establish this quantum diffusion that is this gxy uh, square, and from there because you compute so explicitly you get a QE correct. You get QE correct, and you can compare. You can do a comparison of eigenvalues, of, and then you get a Dyson Brownian motion to not change the eigenvalue very much, and then you get universality. And so I, I'm sort of quite happy that the, all this concept of the quantum diffusion. And uh, this QUE and uh, this Dyson Brownian motion and universality, they all at the end all come up together, uh, put in one, in one models and one use all these properties. And I, I bet that uh, Peter never thought about this quantum unit Gardisti can be used in this way. <laughs> and uh, I'm happy that actually it's, uh, it's, it's, it's connected together. All right, so, uh, so here is a list of open questions and uh, you know, um, so of course you can you have to decrease the dimension. Actually, I know how to. I think heuristically I can see uh, up to four, but to three I you know, I, I don't I don't really quite see how to go to three, and also decrease eta to L minus D. I think this one, wow, this may be, and you know, we we get D plus five or something. But yeah, that, that, that's a big thing. That's a big step, right? <laughs> and so still. Uh, yeah. And then the extend this idea to random showing that is a standard question. And then, uh, oh, I see, so this is about the irregular graph because I have uh, three lectures and so on. And uh, also try to do this, uh, this levy matches with these mark transitions and I'm more yeah, to talk about this, but uh, we didn't really make enough effort <laughs> on these questions. And also, uh, there, there are also a lot of problems on this neural network. And uh, uh, so if one, I prefer like to do this uh, application. One can also uh, look into this direction. And these are sort of standard open questions. And uh, if you if you can try the yeah, other question, you can try is uh, try to reduce the randomness. So I think Avi would like this question very much. And, and uh, uh, so many can, can one can one try to sort of reduce the randomness you are using. Actually. Uh, we have some papers. Uh, I had some papers with archive and, uh, and sort of instead of n squared randomness, we can use only n randomness. And I think they have a recent paper they can only use one randomness. Is this? Yeah. Okay. I have a student uh, Arca and, uh, and 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 Marius. And Marius I got his last name and. And the student, the Arca, Arca was his, his, uh, his last name. But Kahari? Yes, yes, yes. They have a paper which just, just used just one randomness. 
Right. But of course, but of course. randomness meaning is oh. the deregular growth. No, 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 no deregular. <laughs> it, it's, a, it, it's sort of dynamical construction. You, it's sort of like a uh, quasi periodic uh, quasi periodic kind, kind of concept. And also, there's a connection between the. This is actually one of my favorite questions, but I, I didn't make any progress, so I just shut up. So, uh, so random matrices in this and the spin gas model near the critical point actually they are related. And so, uh, so, I mean, it would be wonderful one can connect these two uh, two subjects. It would be wonderful. And then the other two was uh, well, this is sort of far too ambitious, and also um, so something outside the metric model can one. For example, like many body system can want to say something. So, so this is the end of that. So thanks a lot. Okay, that was wonderful. Uh, are there some questions? Uh, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna continue uh, a little bit uh, at, at four o'clock. Uh, yeah, but we are hot, but, it, but it's no, it's not, it's not, it's uh, it's a it, private it, lecture, right? Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's a be real, it is private lecture, and uh, <laughs> it's going to get ugly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. okay. uh, well, so, this will also be a lot more questions. So, this is semi past version, <laughs> <laughs> okay? Uh, well, um, any, uh, so yes. It's an addition with what is called the Schwinger and Dyson equation. Oh, Dyson, I see. That's uh, the Schwinger and Dyson are I mean, exactly what we are saying that you can get frozen equation. Uh, yes, that's uh, no, it's, uh, it's quite forgotten. Even. So it's, uh, it's this mass approaching plus, plus V. You want to look at the, the eigenvalues, and then you you sort of uh, sort of invert this guy. And, uh, and then uh, you can make the values and invert this. So this kind of idea. And all this was used in the in, in the band matrix. In the band matrix, you can you can you can the broad band matrix and sort of you can uh, you can look at some of the as a main part as uh, about the Bremer Schwinger of this A plus B, and some of them as a main part and the other piece as the, as the off diagonal. But this idea was it's just too much one dimension, so I don't I don't think it's going to work in high dimension. It's, it's going to be very difficult to work in high dimension. So I think the high dimension, I think the, the current way we are trying to do is probably uh, it's, it's better. And this this was this very much finger was was some older. Uh, I mean, we tried at one dimension at some point and we find it useful, but, but we couldn't extend to higher dimension, so we we'll switch. Thank you very much.